What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out some new add-ons as well as some updated add-ons that have been released in the last couple weeks. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so note that a bunch of these are on sale in the Blender Market uh, Winter Sale, which is gonna run through February 25th. So if you do wanna get some of these at 25% off, you can do that. You can do that by visiting the cgessentials.com slash winter sale. Also note that some of these are going to be affiliate links, meaning I do receive a commission if you purchase through those links. But let's take a look at some of the trending add-ons in the warehouse right now, as well as some others that just got updates that may not be on this list. Make sure that you stick around till the end to make sure that you see all of them because there are some pretty cool ones we're going to talk about. All right, so first off, we've got one that kind of like shot up the list really quickly. It's called Quick Physics from Amandeep. Um, we've talked about some of his add-ons before. He's got a lot of really interesting add-ons um, that do utility things as well as some other interesting stuff as well. So he's got kind of a bundle of his add-ons, but uh, he's usually got some pretty good stuff in his add-ons. But Quick Physics, is basically a tool designed to help you quickly create physics things in your models. So he's got options in here to do things like cloth simulation, um, whether that's creating cloth panels or do cloth dropping, as well as quickly setting up rigid body simulations within your model, which is great for like scattering things, you know, putting things in piles, other things like that without you having to do them manually. Um, so he's also got the ability to do some curve simulation in there as well. And again, this one just kind of came out of nowhere. It just rolled out and it just shot up to the top of the blender market. So if you're looking to do some quick physics, you can check out um, Quick Physics by MND. All right, so one click damage just came out with version 2.0. And while it has the simple, easy way to make damage inside of Blender, it now has this hero mode. And what the hero mode does is it adds a number of different geometry nodes that you can use in order to further adjust your meshes. So let's say for example that we had this object right here, I could make damage. And remember it has multiple different damage types. You can adjust things like the scale of the damage, the amount of the damage, things like that. And you can apply that. But now if you click on the option to go hero, what that's gonna do is that's gonna add these uh, these uh, geometry node setups. And you can come in here and you can use this in order to further adjust what's going on with the damage in your model. So you can either add quick damage in here, or you can get more fine tuned and adjust the damage that you can create on objects using the geometry node setup. So quick, easy way to add damage to your models. All right, so next up, we've got a tool or a collection of assets, I think is more a better way to describe it, from Antoine Bagatini, the creator of Bagapi. And so remember that Bagapi is the free modifier that you can download in order to do a lot of different things from creating different like columns and architectural models, other things like that. And so Baga Grove is a collection of different asset packs um, that he's created in conjunction with Evermotion and basically what it is is it's a collection of things that are designed to help you quickly generate um, things like grasses and other things like that in your model. And so basically the way this one works, and I think I'm gonna do a little bit uh, more in-depth tutorial on this one, but you install the packs. So in this case, I've only installed the garden for right now. I guess I have the street as well, but you can pick any pack or grove that you want out of this collection, and then you just draw a shape. So I'm just gonna draw the shape right here. And what this is gonna do is this is going to scatter those objects inside of the shape that you've drawn. But basically you just come in here and you just draw wherever you want this to go, and it's going to quickly scatter the assets in the pack that you selected inside of that location. And notice how there are options in here to adjust things like the way that the scattering is created in here. So you can adjust the way that those plants are in here. Um, and again, you kind of use these curves in order to do this, but it gives you um, it, it gives you some control. Notice how the right is the big instances of objects and the left is the smaller instances of objects, but it gives you different ways to set the way these are scattered in here. So it's designed to be a quick, 
easy scattering tool. You can also set if there's edges around the outside or not, other things like that. So definitely interesting. I'm gonna be doing a more in-depth video on this one in the next couple days. All right, so Zen UV has been updated to version 4.3. So Zen UV is an excellent tool for creating different UV maps inside of Blender. It's got a number of tools in here to help you set up UV maps. The new version, you can check out the release notes in their documentation page. And so they've added a number of different things like snapping when you're working on your trim sets, as well as a number of other things for working with UVs in Blender. Now, I don't do a ton of advanced UV mapping, but I know this is a great tool for making your life easier when you are trying to do that. So definitely at least worth checking out this release notes log and seeing if any of these features uh, are interesting to you in this uh, already pretty deep tool set for UV mapping in Blender. All right, so this is less of an add-on and more of just an update to a resource, but Creative Shrimp have updated their Nebula course, which I've heard a bunch of really good things about, um, where they teach you how to create 3D Nebula in Blender. So in addition to their original course, they now have included a bonus EV section and they added a bonus star field section designed to help you create star fields in Blender. So if you're going to do like space modeling, this is like a nine hour course that gets way in depth on how to create things like nebulas. And the, these guys are fantastic 3D artists, so they have a lot of great resources online. So I have no issue recommending any kind of resources from these guys because you can just see the quality of their work um, and um, I've, I don't think I've seen anything else that really teaches you how to create these kind of like space models. All right and so we're so while we're talking about creative shrimps tools um, they've also updated their dust particles plus add-on. And so they've added the ability to do custom mesh shapes. Some of these are in the pro version. Some of these are in the light version, by the way. Um, but you've got spherical fade now. You've got example project files, as well as some additional sprites. So they've got a full change log in here that you can take a look at, but they've updated this to version 1.1. All right, so another free tool is the Sculpt Bridge tool from Nodes Interactive. Uh, these are the guys that brought us Wrap Master, um, which is that excellent tool for creating wraps around objects. Um, but this is a free bridge tool, which basically allows you to bridge or punch holes in meshes. So basically what you can do is you can select areas of faces and then create a bridge um, inside of the Sculpt version. Now, I don't do a ton of in sculpting right now in Blender, but this tool seems to be very helpful for doing things like bridging across faces to create holes, as well as creating geometry across two different surfaces. And you can download this one for free. So go give this one a try and happy sculpting. All right, so I've talked about this one a couple times already, but Alt-Tab Easy Fog 2 came out. This is one of the most popular add-ons in the Blender market um, store right now. And so you can get the free demo version or the personal license version in here, but this is a tool for creating fog. And what they did in this version is they kind of rewrote the user interface and in my opinion, made it even easier to use. Um, but they've also got a number of different presets that you can use in order to create fog, as well as some VDB volumes. There's some animated presets. There's actually a lot of stuff in here, um, especially for whatever the typical price is, like $8, it's $6 now when it's on sale. So so if you're creating any kind of fog, this has a number of tools that are going to make that easier in Blender, so definitely worth checking out. All right, so I wanted to talk about this one more because it's trending than it being um, updated, but Auto Highlight and Outliner is a simple tool that does one thing. Um, it basically sets this up where if you select things inside a Blender, it's going to select them or highlight them in the Outliner. So otherwise you have to go find those objects in the Outliner and it can be a little bit frustrating. This tool, when you turn it on, will basically, even within collections, highlight the object that you have selected in the outliner. So you don't have to go looking for those anymore. So this is a tool that does one singular thing, but if you have a lot of collections or nested things in your models, um, it does this one thing extremely well. So definitely worth checking out um, if you're tired of looking for things in the outliner. All right, so Casey Sheep has released better lighting 
version two, as well as his assets library builder, which we talked about in a video yesterday, the tool designed to help you quickly create assets that are like rendered. That one actually has some studio presets in it as well. Um, this tool is more designed to create lighting in your scenes and specifically it creates kind of these gobo looks in here, right? So lights that have like a shape associated with them um, or kind of colors associated with them, things like this. So the lights that you add it basically adds these lighting setups inside a blender that are kind of like preset and ready to go. And then you can come in here and you can make adjustments to this. Now, if we jump over into blender just for a second and I'll go ahead and pull it up. And so basically what you do is you select these and then you basically import this. So I'm just going to click in here in order to import it. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to move it so that it's aligned with my model. But what these are is these are light setups that are kind of set up with uh, kind of this gobo texture. So if I jump over into cycles, for example, we're gonna go ahead and do this. Notice what it's gonna do is it's going to generate that lighting and notice how that lighting has this kind of like shadowy look to it, kind of like the light was shining through trees or something like that. Um, so, and I definitely think that that's super interesting and I do think that's helpful for creating different kinds of scenes. What I wish he had in here, and maybe he can add this in a future version, I really kind of wish that in addition to these, he also had some just like typical studio setups, um, kind of like the, uh, I think it was the blender lighting studio studio um, tool from uh, Blender Guru a few years back. It would be nice to have some more like standard lighting setups in here as well. Um, that being said, I mean, these these are definitely good and those shadows allow you to do really interesting things in your scene with the lighting. Note that there are settings over here that you can adjust, right? Like strength of lighting, color of lighting, other things like that. Some of these I think have multiple lights associated with them. So you can adjust all of those within the add-on. I would just like to see some kind of like typical studio setups in here as well. Um, but if you are looking for a lighting tool with these more complex lighting setups, you can check out better lighting. All right, and then this update was in the last day or so, but Fluid Painter just came out with their newest version 1.3.12. And basically in addition to being able to quickly generate different fluids inside of Blender, um, which we already knew that this tool could do, this comes with an additional tool for sticking fluids to animated objects. And so what that means is that means that you can apply the fluids to different things um, and then animate them and the fluid is going to stay with the object. So if you are creating any kind of like animations or anything like that, this is definitely an interesting tool for that. So notice how you can use, once you've attached this, if you animate the object, those fluids are going to kind of stick to it. So, so for me, I can definitely see this being helpful for things like this, uh, things like this cloth simulation where he's simulating this uh, surface with the ketchup on it um, and the cloth actually moving. So being able to kind of like stick these to an object for animation, I think could definitely be really interesting. Note that that doesn't really continue to simulate. What it does is it just kind of like, it, it just kind of like sticks there and remains with the surface. But I still definitely think that this could be helpful if you do want to animate those objects that have the fluids on them. In addition to the tools that are already in here for quick painting fluids on surfaces. All right, so those are some of the updated and new add-ons for Blender right now. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you want me to talk about any of them more in depth. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to all of those in the notes down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.